Okay. I'm going to check again to make sure we are live. And so, but do not, I would not suggest you guys talk because I've caught myself uh, talking a lot of time. But let me just check it online. We are live, guys. <clears throat> well, uh, thank you so much and welcome. And Dr. Trevor, it's really uh, great having you here. Uh, good morning, good afternoon uh, for those of you guys who are in Europe and America, I mean, uh, Africa. And uh, I wanted to first apologize for starting this show a little bit late. We had a meeting, an important meeting that ran about late by about four minutes. And then because of that late meeting, for some reason, uh, uh, the, uh, the stream yard would not allow me to go on Facebook Live, and we were on Facebook Live. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Trevor, welcome. You know, and this is our weekly uh, conference. We usually talk about what's in the news. We do a little bit of both. Um, you know, what's in international news been happening. For example, today one of the topics we're going to talk about it is that uh, about the killing that happened in West Romania and the video that's circulating online, as well as the another video that is circulated online by, uh, it looks like he's dressed up with the Ethiopian federal military, but he's, he's, he's in Amhara region, definitely, because you can see the audience where he says that, you know, for every one Oromo that they, Amhara that they killed, they are planning to kill 100 uh, Oromos and 100 uh, Ben Shangul, Gumus, he said, particularly Gumus. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the UN. And partially, we also talk about the general sense of the advocacy and uh, that we do. Uh, this, you know, we are with Ola, you are with the OSG. OSG does one of the most amazing data collection of the, any sort. And we use it a lot for our lots of uh, internet documents. Uh, so I'll give you a chance to kind of introduce yourself, what you do. And, uh, you know, you've been an Oromo before even I think I was born, but uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to our audience. We have about 100 plus people watching us live right now. And next week we have somebody from Ben Shangal Gamoz who's going to be right on this table. You're going to be invited back to kind of deal with him. So it might be about five of us. Uh, our guy, uh, uh, what's his name? Tisha will also be back. Uh, but anyway. Let's get to it, uh, Dr. Trevor. Welcome and thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you very, very much for, for inviting me. It's, it's a great privilege to to be on uh, on this regular show. And I, this is exactly the sort of thing that uh, we need. It's a, a voice in the diaspora that, that is regular and um, broadcast on a regular basis. So well done you, Senna, and well done Ola. It's, uh, it's a, a great job that you're doing. And my name is uh, Trevor Truman. I'm a retired GP, a general medical practitioner. And, and between 1988 and 1991, I helped train Aroma Relief Association health workers. Um, and since that time, I've been heavily involved with uh, reporting on human rights abuses in, in Ethiopia, especially in Aromia region. And up until 2012, we were very active. And then the Aromia Media Network uh, began to be very active. And Kero was very active. And everything seemed to be eventually going in the right direction without any need for the Aromia Support Group. But then in 2018, when killing started happening again, despite all the good news that was coming out of the media. Uh, we felt the need to, to start publishing again. And so since um, uh, the first report we wrote since uh, October 18 was in fact in June 2019. And since then we've written another seven reports, 50 to 57, or eight reports have been written in the last uh, three years and in the last two and a half years, in fact. And this reflects the, the degree of human rights abuse that's been going on in that time. Um, 
Well, that's the introduction over. I, I better stop there rather than rabbiting on. Back to you, sir. No, actually, uh, Dr. Trevor, I mean, that is amazing because we internally, as I mentioned, use it. Uh, a lot of your publication, we might not say, uh, um, uh, but a lot of people don't know about it. Having this data, I, I cannot emphasize how necessary it is to do our advocacy work. And then, but we ourselves, and I think Kana will speak about it, we actually pay people to give us the data and we still don't get in, uh, like a sufficient data. And uh, we'll jump on and talk about all of our things. And again, this is like more of a conversation, uh, that, you know, uh, not just you know, me asking you a question, but also you giving us input and things like that about, you know, we'll, we'll dive into about the current affair. But before that, I'll give uh, my colleague, uh, Kana, uh, I'm pretty sure you've heard of Dr. Trevor, you've seen the report, and you've seen our letter we wrote to the White House, our letter to, wrote to the State Department, our letter. In fact, uh, recently we wrote to the UN, we, you know, were just in a meeting with them actually, uh, about the omission of Oromia, uh, the situation in Oromia, how that was disheartening to our community. So for those of us who are doing a lot of advocacy to kind of um, see that's missing, uh, but Kana, let me give you a chance and uh, please uh, and say hi to our audience and also uh, feel free to say a few things, uh, ask Dr. Uh, Trevor a question because there's so much that we can talk about what IB is doing to Romo, what IB is doing to Southern Nation. And IB is typical Naftanya. And what Naftanya means, because you've seen how Facebook was targeting people when you use the, your, the word Naftanya. It doesn't imply Amhara. Well, they are some Amhara elite because they're Naftanya and they indulge in that idea. They feel sensitive. They, they like to, they used to be under the banner of Ethiopianism. That is gone now. You know what I'm saying? Amhara is advocating for Amhara, almost advocating for Oromo. We as a people can live together. I have no doubt about that. Whether we are neighbors, whether we are one country, we can live together. But for as long as they start hiding, and this is the banner of one in Ethiopia. But Ghana, let me ask, give you a chance to say a few things. Yes. Uh... Thank you, thank you, Dr. Galato. My name is Kana Golicha. I'm a report writer uh, at Ola. Uh, I, I write reports uh, daily from that daily atrocities happening, extrajudicial killing, enforced disappearance, kidnapping, uh, mass displacement, refugee influx. That's all the report I write. And uh, sometimes uh, you get uh, getting this report from the ground because of uh, government filtering, internet blocking channel, uh, spying has created that shortage. We cannot able to get a uh, report. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe my, uh, as the audience, that there is atrocity currently going on. Max uh, detention of Oromo youth. For example, last week we got uh, Oromo youth who are, uh, you know, uh, coming, coming, you know, going to their respective home from uh, festivals in a decent uh, bishop to uh, detain mass detention of them and extrajudicial killing that's up on daily basis, you know, uh, government security uh, forces, keep, you know, taking some people from jail and executing them in forest, damping them. That currently atrocities happening and advocacy has been uh, one of our best uh, way to do, you know, being voice for the voiceless. Uh, my, uh, maybe you got more experience with this doing, maybe my question will be, uh, how can we improve, you know, getting more report, getting, getting more data collection from the crowd? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Kana. Um, I, I was about to launch into uh, a description of the extrajudicial killings that we've been reporting on. So your comments are, are very apposite. Um, We've been reporting the, the systematic elimination of Kero uh, since October 2018. And uh, this indeed appears to be official policy with people getting awards for how many they have killed. Um, the, in the, the last eight reports since uh, June 2019, We've reported 2,390 extrajudicial killings, killings of civilians. And this is outside of Tigray, not including killings in Somalia region or Afar region. Now, that is over three years. That compares to 20 years of reporting from about 1992 to 2012, when OSG 
named four and a half thousand extrajudicial killings. So 4,500 in 20 years. And now with Abbey's government, it's 2,400 in three years. That's 15% of the time and half the total, more than half the total. So in other words, the proportion of killings under this regime is much, much greater. The second thing about the killings is, in previous reports, the, the ratio of people killed to those detained has been something like 1 in 10, 1 in 20 something, or perhaps 1 in 100. But under this government, the ratio of those detained compared to those killed is a lot less. Much more people are being killed compared to those detained. A further thing, OSG has reported, as I say, uh, 2,400, well, 2,393, I think it is. And this is only a tiny fraction of what's going on. The, there are some brave human rights defenders from Buliso district in West Wallaga. They collected data uh, intensely over five districts. That's five out of the 23 districts in West Wallaga. And West Wallaga is one out of 17 zones in Aromia region. So it's a small fraction. But the number of killings they had recorded since 2018 was something like four times, five times the number that we had recorded in that time. So in other words, we were only getting less than 20% of the numbers killed. So you can see that um, the, the numbers being killed is astronomical. And this is from areas that we we have relatively good reporting. We have more contacts in Wallaga than elsewhere. But we know that atrocities are going on all over the place, especially around Guji, uh, but we get very little information from there. And the recent uh, report from Varana, and when I've tried to access them, I've been denied access through Facebook and through Twitter now. So somebody is engineering um, access to these uh, videos. Um, in terms of what can be done, Kanga, thank you very much for, for raising this. We need solid information. We hear lots of uh, reports, as you say, people say, oh, lots of people are killed um, in this area, but we don't get names, times, any detail. And I'm afraid that this doesn't go down very well with people who, who are uh, affected by um, accurate reports of human rights abuses, that they will not listen unless you have some sort of detail there and some eyewitness reports. So it, the, the important thing is to record what's happened and, and let us know. Um, and often the, the safest method is by post. But whatever method you can use, let us know. The Aromi Support Group has its um, website and our physical address and telephone number are all on the website. You know what? Uh, I, I want to follow up on that, uh, that's Trevor. I think because um, our audience, we obviously this is the weekly show and we do know officials, US officials, uh, at least staffers do listen to some of our show. That's why this is targeted to, especially non aromas So, and and then sometimes we do, what we do is we also do speak in a final aroma what we want to focus on aroma. In terms of this writing, uh, the, uh, the, the question Kana asked, because we, and I'm pretty sure you have sort of struggled, the lot of the report that you are likely, you are liking getting is from West Oromia. West Oromia obviously have one of the highest, very well educated, in the Ethiopia, and of, of course, you know, among Oromo, and that made it so much good, so much easy. But where you have the world, one of the most heinous atrocities happening in the South Oromia, particularly in the Guji, and before even uh, Oromia uh, Support Group, uh, OST, the Amnesty, Human Rights, uh, uh, Amnesty International wrote uh, documenting uh, in 2019 and 2020 report that atrocity that was happening in Guji, 
in more than any other place, but because they don't have enough you know, well-educated people or well connection that we don't hear about it. The government is, you guys, like you say, is getting a fraction of what's happening. So these are, uh, our, our audience are variety here. In fact, next week we've invited and have accepted a gentleman who is a chairman for, uh, I think, uh, Gumu's uh, advocacy group. And um, I've, I've been in the meeting with them, with the big, you know, with the UN and other officials. And when you hear the stories of what happened to them, how they are targeted by Amara regional government, by federal government, by, by, uh, because they're so minority, they're so small, they have no voice. And I myself, being in their presence, hearing their struggle of 150 years, I thought it was just a rumor, honestly. I knew I understand the, the pain that our people are facing. Uh, we face because I'm a victim of it. My family, I've seen that. Well, I've seen the torture survival. I've interviewed. I've seen the pain. But when I hear this uh, people, how they are ridiculed by Amhara elites, and then you have the UN statement that came out uh, last week. Uh, I mean, likely, you know, we obviously wrote to them. Uh, we are happy to report and to say, uh, Kana was just in that meeting, uh, we obviously don't tell which office. We don't want to get in trouble for you know talking everything off record. We're not saying any office, but with those who met with, we are so lucky to know they hear they got our letter and they know what it is. And that statement came out. Uh, we, you know, it's a separate office we met with, but it wasn't. It doesn't seem to be intentional, at least from what they're saying. But the bottom line is so painful when you have been uh, most people that have among people who are so small in a number, but being ethnically cleansed, and here you have the UN you know, office tweeting or writing about the people of Tigray, which is the facing genocide, and Amhara, who are Amhara regional government is the perpetuator of this violence and instability, and they, they, they want to give sympathy. I don't know, uh, Dr. Trevor, how you, how you feel, but it's so painful, like, you want to give the Amhara uh, regional government who are the behind all this violence and instability. I've sat in a meeting where you have the Gumus, the Somalis, the Sidamas, the Kemant, and nine other groups, nine ethnic groups, and everybody is clearly saying they took that cancer is and or was and is and will always be this particular ethnic, uh, I, I don't want to say the people because they are innocent people, but the elites, are, you know, the realization is no, but it's, I, I want you to speak a little bit more about that pain of that, you know, watching, because I've seen a comment like, oh, you ain't, you know, forgot that 60, 50% of the population. But I don't know, how, what do you think about is the world intentionally? Because even though you've been in parts of the struggle, you've been writing a report, you are not Oromo, you are, you know, Euro European, uh, I believe you are UK, you know, uh, uh, citizen, but who is, uh, you your field, your study, or at least is in, in medical, but he, you have dedicated into human rights. But w what is it that the international community, we've met with the, as Allah, we met with the UN, we met with the US government, we met with the Europe, and dozens of European parliaments. We're working now with Australia. What is it about Oromo? What is it about the thousand people? What is it about the oppressed people of Ethiopia that cannot get an ear and attention uh, from the international community. What do you think about that, uh, Dr. Chaba? Well, it's not surprising. It's like expecting the international community in the 1920s to listen to citizens of Bombay and about the British rule there. And of course, nobody was listening. And it is the same now. We are the, the underdogs. Um, and by the way, I, I am an honorary Aromo. I was adopted in 2016. So I, I do have joint nationality um so uh yes and it is as you say due to the elite but we must be careful of the way we use um the the language here it's it it's very easy to blame the amhara people for what is happening uh to the aroma people and it isn't the amhara people that are doing this although they may support or may not support what their what their militia and what their elites are doing what they're planning to do but yes they have control of the media and the reason for that is that um amhara well people from the north of ethiopia have been outside of ethiopia in 
uh, international media in international organizations like the UN, like the World Health Organization, and in non-governmental organizations. And they, they've been there for 70, 80 years. Whereas the Romo and other people who not had a voice have only been over here since, well, really since the 80s and 90s, and in numbers at any rate. And therefore, everybody's view of Ethiopia is through Amhara eyes, because those, those are the people that have told everybody about Ethiopia. And so when people see Ethiopia, they imagine the Amhara script, the Agea script. They imagine uh, Amhara culture and music. And uh, they imagine starvation. That's the other thing that Ethiopia is known for. And this has got to change. And that's, that's our job. Um, I share with you, uh, Senna, the, the pain of the other peoples. And we do report when we get information from uh, Beni Shangul, the most region, Metzgazan especially, and uh, we've reported several instances there. And I, I agree entirely, it's not only Aroma, it's uh, what, 70%, 75% of the whole Ethiopian population. Once you've taken out the 25% or so of Harris and 5% Tigrayans, then the rest are ignored. As you say, it's about 70%, 65%, 70%. 70%. And not only uh, Beni Shangul Gamuz, the, the people in Gambella, are having a dreadful, dreadful time. And people in southern nations, nationalities, and people's region. And these people are scared when uh, the Oromo talk about self-determination um, because they wonder where are they going to be uh, placed and if the Oromo do sort of separate. So we have to think about all of the non-Abyssinian peoples of Ethiopia. And I think, as you said, uh, to me the other day, Senna, we should be campaigning alongside all these people. It's not just the Aroma. The Aroma just happen to be the most persecuted because they're the most numerous. And they were very strong and, uh, with, with the Pero. So that had to be got rid of if Abby was going to advance his plans on the, for the Empire. But his days are numbered, as we all know. And when we do get coordinated activity between all the southern peoples, including the Aroma, hesitate to use the word southern because some um, oppressed peoples are not southern, uh, the Kimant, the Agal, uh, but the oppressed peoples of Ethiopia. We all feel the same and we need each other to, to get rid of uh, the present regime and to persuade the Americans and the Europeans to, to support us in the, in the eventual stabilization of Ethiopia. Because it will not be stable unless the voices of the people presently unheard are heard. Sorry, I ranted on, Senna. Nope, you are good to go. Tana, it's all yours. And then uh, let's, you know, we got maybe ten, five, five to 10 minutes maximum. This is the 30 minutes. The point is hot discussion and next week we'll have a, a, a gentleman who, as I mentioned, is from, I believe, is the Gmuz uh, president of the advocacy organization. I've been on the table with him where he talked about the kind of atrocity his people faced by the Amhara ethnic. I think you're, you're right. It's so important, so easy to try paint the Amhara people all, but that we know that it's wrong. It is, we, we Amhara regional government, unfortunately, is Amhara police, the Amhara youth, and the Amhara regional government. These are the ones that the international communities are accusing them of genocide or ethnic cleansing in Tigray. And these are the same people who have done the same thing for 150 years. I, I think one of our main jobs is to reassure the Amhara population about true Oromo intentions and what Oromo people want. We, we don't want to dominate other people. We yeah. just want an equal voice and a share. And we want peace and prosperity like most Amhara people do. And yet, they are told constantly by their media that the Romo are people to be feared, the people who are greedy, who want to take all the resources of Ethiopia to their own uh, region. And 
this is the old fashioned zero sum winner takes all mode. And Aroma are not into that. And once we get an equal distribution of, of power in Ethiopia between all the people, then we'll see true progress and stability in the region. But people have to get rid of these blinkers. That only the belligerents, the people who are fighting up in the north, they're the only ones we're talking to. They're the problem. They're not the solution. Thank you so much, Kana. Uh, I'll go to you. Um, go ahead and, you know, I mean, again, uh, you know our struggle of data collection. We're so in dismay and believe about the capacity, how the Oromia Regional Force have killed those two youths. We just finished a meeting with the, some UN officials. Uh, we brought up this very discussion. We've, we're, we're writing press release on it. We're, we're preparing a campaign on it for the way the Oromia community because should reach out to the elected officials, call Congress, call Parliament, and let them know the barbaric system of almost uh, tar being targeted by Abbey. And uh, you also know, you know, we work, you directly, since we work together, we have, uh, you know, other people, hopefully our other team will also should join us. Those who focus on Australia, those who focus on Europe, those who focus on America should maybe want to stay and have a talk. And on the other hand, you know Dr. Trevor, and we used a lot of, at least you see a lot of uh, OSG reports from there. Um, so take it all about what you know the the killing the what the Amhara militia pers uh, military person had said on the social media circulating about the uh, in Borana uh, area the killing that happened and then also how the UN because the US just for another statement yesterday uh, sending more aid to there but according to the UN data 40 percent of I believe it was malnourished people in February of this year was in Oromia 40 percent was in Oromia. 40%, this is the UN data. This is extremely conservative data. Nevertheless, we don't hear anything. Uh, go ahead and take it and got a few minutes. We're gonna wrap up very soon, but on our next week, we'll talk about uh, Trevor, but uh, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, uh, I, I would like to say that to, you know, condemn with the strongest time possible, the execution of young, innocent boys, uh, such an evil through such an evil way. Uh, it shows that in Ethiopia, the judiciary is totally collapsed. The rule of law is no longer the state is uh, ruled by law of the jungle. And when the law of the jungle is at the play, whoever strong kills and whoever strong enjoys. And um, that is why I, I, I would like to take this time to condemn those people who, co who committed such atrocities, such execution, such... Uh, and I don't know why, uh, you know, Facebook... Uh, removed it because uh, it is it showed us and uh, it showed that you know there is a bias and in terms of you know bias trying to you know downplay the voice of the people because that's uh, an evidence that it was never about you know uh, you know encouraging any violence it was just showing that to the public the atrocity that has been committed in Ethiopia and uh, I would like to take and say that uh, you know these people who are Taking who are doing such who are committing such atrocity will be unliable sooner or later because crime will not have no expired dates. Once you commit a crime, whether it is hundred years ago, whether it's how many years ago, you will be held liable for that. Uh, yeah. Secondly, uh, like you said, uh, you see uh, in Oromia, this conflict currently going on in Tigray has caused you know mass influx of refugees uh, to Kenyan side. Uh, young people are running away because they are forcefully taken to the war. The conflict it has done mass displacement in the wallows uh, who are Oromos and government. Uh, it has really killed the economy of uh, Oromos because Oromos are forcefully contributing properties. You know, cattle's monies are being collected on daily basis to be taken to the war conflict. Young people are forced to take part in this conflict. They are running away and they are becoming refugees, and uh, uh, no one about cares about them. And this is why. Inclusivity, you know, you cannot just say the Ethiopian government and TPLF should just, you know, do uh, negotiation. There are none other state, none uh, state actors who are taking part in conflict. What about those four actors uh, who are taking part in conflict? This conflict started from Oromi, and when you avoid the Oromos, when you draw them out of uh, negotiation, how will it have a lasting peace? You see, the government. Really, uh, this 
you see report which came out yesterday in this standard where uh, in Borana zone more more than five five thousand kettles died and even human beings are dying uh, and the government is still them they bring that cow which is dying take them to you know tigres <laughs> and then you are uh, all sold your cow and bring the cash the young human resources are being taken there and you see in, in rc region where uh like you said february more than uh, four million people are you know in verge of anger and uh, nowadays now the un office is focusing taking food to tigre and afar it totally shows that you know oromos are put out of this uh, negotiation or you know even the donation they are out and uh, it is sad then that if we stop this uh, conversation advocacy that the voice of marginalized will just die away and this is not right we cannot use famine starvation as a force the voice of the people will be heard thank you okay uh so dr trevor this is how we're going to end i want i'll give you about two minutes uh what we'll do is we'll try to make it as short that way people enjoy it and get the message you got about two minutes uh, same topics that i gave uh kana I'll take the last one minute and wrap it up. We'll come back next week. We'll try to have one hour meeting just because we're going to have you on the show as well as the Ibrahim, who is uh, from, I believe, a Gumus community. Well, I, I, there, there may be problems with me coming here regularly. I, I have to take half a day off for my... Okay, well, we'll, see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Oh, maybe we can, don't worry. We'll, we'll work that part behind the, the sure. scene. But for okay. right now, you know... What do you tell the international community? Uh, you know how vast the Roma population are, how the thousand people account to, the oppressed people account to, 90% of the Zambian population, and the people who are perpetuating is the less than 10%. Even in the whole, I'm not talking about, not Amhara, all Amharas are evil, obviously. These are, we're talking about the elites. Amhara people live in Oromia and peace, and have lived in Oromia, have lived throughout Ethiopia and peace. It is those, those the Naftenyas, who want to control others, who want yeah. to have the hegemony of Amhara, Amharic language to come to power. What is your message for them? What is your major message for our people who we are struggling getting the data? How important it is that they give this data to us, that because we, like Hannah said, we are the small voices, that's reaching out to the UN, that's reaching out to the US government. If we don't do this, their voice is gone. We are the small voice that's there for the people. You get the last word, uh, Dr. Trump. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I've got two messages, really. One, for the international community, if you really care about Ethiopia, then we have to change the way we do things. We have to break this mold of allowing one group to dominate over another. And we have to share. And we have to share in a way that's decided. Uh, Dr. Trevor, Dr. Trevor, let me, let me jump. You mentioned about break this mold. Could you also speak about, because we've been working but 12, 13 Oromo advocacy group for the last few months, take the, add that in there too, because it's just, I think it will make Oromo a little bit happy to hear that too. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, it, it's been a remarkable uh, breakthrough over the last few weeks. We've got um, practically all the influential Oromo advocacy groups to agree on a common stance in terms of what we want to present to the international community. We know that our message is not the elite, but we have a, a real message to send. And this is not to listen to the same old voices who've caused the same old problems in Ethiopia. Let's break this mold. Let's get to the nitty gritty with the others in Ethiopia, the people who matter, the ones who are oppressed, the ones who are being killed. And it's about time we spoke to the people who are not in the political elites there. The people who are in prison at the moment. These are the people we need to speak to, who we need to help shape the future of Ethiopia. And the Oromo people are not the problem. They are the solution. And all the other peoples of Ethiopia have relationships with the Oromo, which generally are friendly. And the Oromo are present in every region of Ethiopia. They have a culture which is historically um, respectful for democracy and human rights and the environment. So let's get on with it. Let's start negotiating with the people who live there instead of the people who dominate there. Thank you. Oh, my message to the Roma people is hang in there. 
we're closer now we're closer now than we have ever been to running our own region in whatever form you want to run it and it's just around the corner there's a lot of hardship in the way but it's it's coming soon thank you thank you so much uh dr trevor Kana, for joining us and for our audience who've been listening to us and i think a lot of people saw you dr trevor as you know our uh audience is very high today so it's gotta be you it's not us and i wanted to say for those of you guys who are commenting about the war muhammad political prisoners <clears throat> and generally about the killing in west Ormia, how abi is systematically cleansing or killing our romos and uh we see that and we appreciate your comments uh please you know and then for those of you who say jl you know uh very important very important important and timely information and then we should let people know this is our weekly conversation moving forward we'll, like, we'll try to have different people in here and platform and my hope is dr trevor i don't want to have that back and forth uh, kind of a conversation i want to have more of a, a debate type more of a i mean right now we're talking online but more of like a round table discussion because i want the gmos the command the romos the osgs the ola different people to come and say like what are we doing right and, and instead of making a typical boring interview i i do not like it so I'll try to adjust myself. So even if you can make it next week, you and I will talk about it because I know you have engagements on uh, Wednesday. And I'm also thinking maybe down the road for November, we'll change the date that way to make it a flexible to a little bit late or something. Uh, we've been doing this for about a year now. And uh, and every Wednesday, we've, we've been coming here, having a discussion. We have brought an audience. And uh, I've, some days are great, some days are not. But I think I, I really have, I enjoy having you here and talking about kind of coming from different perspective. You are someone who have a second citizenship in a Roma, who has seen, but then you have international community whom we meet with, whom are desperate for solution too. They want to some kind of stability in the region, but they're like, but what do we do? And then we give them, but for whatever we give them, it doesn't seem to stick. What is it that we're not doing? I think I would love to hear from uh, other oppressed people, from uh, other communities who don't even have the voice we have because we are the 60% of the Vietnam population who dominate the conversation, at least within our own circle. I think as a Romo, it is so important that we speak for this voiceless people, for this minority people, for this uh, 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 thousand and oppressed people of Ethiopia, whether they are within the Mara region like Gamant and Ago, or uh, or other ones that we don't even know about it, that the, the, the current uh, Naftenia government in power with the hegemony trying to bring back modernization i think we should talk about that with that i don't know if you guys have any last word if not i wanted to thank you guys so very much and you know see you some of you next week thank you thank you have a nice time thank you very thank much you, bye bye